Hey everybody, I am not going to do a painting in this one. This is just to cover some of the questions that I've been asked um, quite a bit. There's, I keep running across some of the same questions from you guys and um, in other uh, Facebook art groups and things. Uh, it seems like there's a lot of similar problems that people are having or questions that they have. So I just wanted to try and cover some of that in this video. Uh, I mean, I will do some examples for you guys with a couple of things. I'm gonna talk about the hair dryer that I use and how I use it. And I know some of you all have gotten this hair dryer and are having trouble with it, using it on cool because it does have a higher airflow than maybe what you're used to. I um, also wanted to, to touch a little bit on applying the metallic in there. That's another thing people seem to be having some trouble with. And I got to tell you, I still have trouble with that a lot of times too. But also with sealing your paintings, I don't think I have ever really talked about that at all. But that is something you absolutely have to do with this alcohol ink. You have to seal it. It will rub off of these slick surfaces um, it can be damaged and scratched but it also will fade in the sunlight so it, it needs to be sealed and treated with the a uv protectant type thing and i'll get into that in a few minutes and i know i'm i'm so sorry if i missed some questions that some of you have had I was trying to look back through things today to make sure I didn't miss anything, but I'm sure I still do. I'm sure I'll probably miss something. Um, it's one of the, the issues that um, a few people have had is, um, you know, you, you have a hard time seeing what I'm doing a lot of times, and that's why you have questions, because you can't tell really well what I'm doing. Because, well, part of my problem there is it's really difficult for me to paint while I'm videoing because I have you see my little my little marks that I have here on the table I think you can see this this is to help remind me that if I go out of the this area right here that you guys probably can't see but my problem is I get completely 100% into what I'm doing when I'm painting. And so, you know, my, my paper scooting and scooting and scooting and scooting, and I forget to, to scoot it back up. And I, it's, it's really hard for me to, to concentrate on, um, okay, I have to make sure that I keep this in the frame. I have to make sure that I don't lean over too far because then my head gets in the way, you know, and then I'm using my, my hair dryer like this and I'm wondering, okay, am I blocking your view from being able to see with the hair dryer if I'm working on my side of it? Um, I have to try not to, to work too much with the hair dryer on the other side where you can't see where the ink's moving. And so I'm really sorry about that because most of those, they're just things I can't really do much about. So I, I hope that you guys are, you know, can see well enough to kind of get a general idea of what I'm doing. If you have, a, you know, more in-depth questions, I'm always happy to answer them. Um, you know, like I've said before, it may take me a day or two sometimes to get back to you just because of a busy life, but I will do my best to answer your questions. And also, um, I love your comments. Thank you all so much. I read every one of them. There's not a single comment that I don't read and it just, they make me smile. I have to read some of them to my husband. <laughs> so, uh, you, you all are just awesome. I love the compliments. They, they keep me inspired. It keeps me doing this because I've, there are so many of you that have let me know how much you appreciate it that it really, really makes me feel good. Um, all right, let's see what to do first. All right, let's talk about the hair dryer first. And I will put the link to this hair dryer in Amazon. I'm not an Amazon affiliate. I don't get any kickback or whatever, no commission off of this. This is just so you guys can see um, exactly what I'm talking about. Um, 
Sorry, I'm gonna get my granddaughter to do me a little favor here. Maddie, Maddie, would you look in the camera and make sure that you can see this? Sorry, guys, I'm try <laughs> I, I tried to make a video one time and realized that um, that you all couldn't see. I did not have, um, I was trying to show the um, hair dryer and the ink I was using that day. <laughs> and I ended up just trashing the whole video because I didn't realize until I went back to do the voiceover that uh, it was like way, way out of frame. Uh, you, you got about a half a glimpse of the hair dryer, you know, and nothing else. All right, so this is just a Revlon brand hair dryer. It's, I, I forget exactly what it's called, but it comes with a brush down here. It's like, it's a curling brush or, I don't know, curl styler. Or I don't know, I don't remember what it's called, but it comes with a round brush attached to it um, on this end. And uh, I just took the brush off. It just popped off. You could actually put it back on there if you wanted to use it for an actual hair dryer. So, but I was looking for something that had a cool setting on it because I was trying, partially I was trying to save money because the heavyweight Upo is more expensive than the medium weight. And also because I just felt like my ink was drying so fast, I was not able to do what I wanted to do with the ink. So I don't, personally, I don't like using heat as much. Some people prefer the heat. They want it to dry quickly. Um, if you do use heat, if you use one with a, a, a hot setting on a hair dryer, or a, a, even a heat gun, if it's got a really super low setting on it, I've seen people do that. Make sure that you buy the heavyweight Upo because the medium weight and the translucent, uh, they will warp really badly from the heat of um, even just this. If I use this, even on the low heat setting, uh, it will still warp uh, the medium weight Upo. Um, I've lost my translucent. Uh, it's uh, in North Carolina with wherever the rest of my Upo is, but uh, it will warp as well. So make sure if you're you this will this the graphics craft plastic will warp with the heat but it flattens itself back out. Now I don't know how much heat it can handle before it doesn't straighten back out again. But um, but it does flatten back out. It it makes it a little difficult to use because you've got these little dips and valleys in it and your ink doesn't always go where you think it's gonna go when it hits one of those, it'll sort of veer off in a different direction. So, gotta be careful about that. But anyway, I did want the cool setting on this, which, you know, it's got a cool, a low heat, and a high heat. Now, the cool setting on this has about as much airflow as the high heat. The, the, I'll let you, let me let you listen to it a minute. So here's cool, you can hear it. And then there's the low heat, and then there's high heat. So you get about as much airflow as with the high heat. So it's a little tricky. If you're used to using something that has a very low airflow, uh, which most people, I, I feel like from what I've heard, most people are starting out with um, hair dryers that are just set on a low heat setting. It it does take some time to get used to using the higher heat or the higher airflow, I'm sorry. Uh, and it, it is a little tricky so that you don't just, you know, splatter your ink all around the paper. You want to wave hi to everybody, Maddie Pie? You can wave hi to everybody. Put your hand right in there and they can see you say hi. <laughs> nope, she's got an attack of shyness. <laughs> um, so let me show you a little bit of what I'm talking about. And I'll, I know you may not be able to hear me while I'm doing this, so you'll pretty much be able to tell what I'm talking about. This is just the back side of some uh, Kirkland brand photo paper, it came from Costco. Um, I think this is an 11 by 14 sheet. I'm, this is okay, but I don't love it. Uh, this is, it, if I'm gonna work with photo paper, personally, 
I prefer the Office Depot brand. That is my absolute favorite. I feel like I get better results. And for those of you who have not watched the video about it and have not and don't know this yet, do not, do not use this glossy side to paint on. The ink will not move on this glossy side. It's made to absorb ink in your printer and not move, so it's virtually impossible to get it to do anything. Once you put it down, it pretty much stays where you put it. Then you can't really, you definitely can't wisp it out, or I can't. Anyway, I, maybe some of you guys have managed to, to do it, but I, I can't, I uh, can't get it to do anything. So I'm using the back side of this paper. Um, this is, I generally just use this to play around on because once I tried it a time or two, I didn't love it. The back is, for me, it's a little papery and I feel like I don't get mm, as smooth looking of a wisp, I guess. I'm not sure how I want to say that, but um, I just really feel like I don't get as good of a, a look off the back of this, if it's gonna be something that you wanna keep. Sorry, I gotta move stuff. I was trying to make sure I had everything set here that I wanted to show you guys. All right, so um, just for, for extreme newbies, you can either put down your alcohol. This is, this is just 91% isopropyl alcohol and a little needle nose applicator bottle. They, you can get them on Amazon by the 10 and 20 pack and stuff. They're I don't remember, maybe seven or eight dollars or something. Uh, they're not super expensive though. Um, you can either put down your alcohol first or you can put down your ink first. I've seen people do it either way. I usually put my ink down first and then put my alcohol down on top of it. And I did have a question one time about how much. Well, <laughs> that depends on how much of an area you want to cover. So, you know, generally, one or two drops is what I use of ink. It can depend on how dark the ink is. If it's a very dark ink, then I tend to use less. Um, if it's a very light ink, I might actually put down four or five drops of it. So for this, I'm just gonna do one, well, <laughs> I was just gonna do one drop, but apparently we're gonna do a few right here. Actually, let's do, do one more. And then just, you know, Put a little alcohol on top of it, and I can't tell you how much. It's, I just play it by ear. Depends on how much I want to spread out what I'm getting ready to do um, right then. But I put a, a squirt. That's about as good as I can tell you. I put a short squirt of alcohol ink down. All right, so when I do this, I'm hoping this doesn't dry up while I'm talking, but... Um, I'm keeping it very close to the paper. Because of this high airflow, if I, watch, this is gonna be what, let me make sure I got enough. This is gonna be what happens if you come in over the top with it on this high, or on the cool setting. You see how, see that's what's gonna happen if you, if you come over the top of it and have your dryer up high. All right, so what you want to do is always try and come in. You want to keep it very close to the paper. I mean, like, maybe, you know, no more than half an inch off the paper. And sometimes, you all, I don't know if you all can see this, but I have actually hit my hair dryer on the paper before where I've had it so close. So... See if you... If you keep it close, you don't have that problem. Although this is still wet out here, so it's blowing it everywhere. Let me get this dry. So you can tell this is this is not going to be a masterpiece or anything here. I'm not trying to to do a painting. I just wanted to show you all some stuff. So, but you can see the difference. I'll do one more spot. 
I'll do a little bit more, but you can see the difference. If I keep this close to the paper, um, the difference in how it's gonna look. So see now, if I come up over top of it too much, it's gonna start doing that again. So you wanna keep it close. All right, and one of the things, thank you, sweetie. One of the things that um, you want to, sorry, I'm getting some stuff arranged here. I was blowing papers off the table here that I had sitting here. Um, all right, for those of you who are new, I know some of you guys already know this, but some of you don't. I know that some are just starting out from the comments that I've had. All right, you. When you've already got your initial puddle dry, you want to put your alcohol down just somewhere right along that the outer edge. You can either put it on it or right outside of it. And then you want to blow it back towards the center. And then you want to blow it back out again and then back towards the center again. And you do this as you know as many times as you want till you get it looking like you want to. But you're gonna kind of, you're gonna have a point eventually where it's gonna start drying out here. And if you want that, the really soft, wispy look and you don't want a line, then you need to come back at whatever the very edge is of where you're working and put ink there. This is a little complicated. It's hard for me to explain to you because there's just, there's different ways you need to handle it at different times. Um, let me, I'm going to work this for just a minute and maybe you can kind of see a little bit of what I'm talking about. I'll try to start letting it get dry out there to where I want to make it. I don't want it to stop yet and I'll try and show you what I mean. But just, you know, put some alcohol down there. Alright, see it's, it's dry right here. So I'm going to come right out here and do that. And that gives me a way to blow that back in without letting it make a solid line out there. All right, let me keep this a second and dry this. So had I not come back and put the alcohol back out here, I would have ended up with, it would have been fainter, but I would have ended up with another line, you know, like this, a very delineated area right there. So that's kind of a, you know, a newbie lesson for those of you who are just starting out because it uh, took me a little while, as weird as that sounds, it took me a little while to figure that out. I was getting so frustrated um, and feeling like I wasn't putting enough alcohol down initially, but I don't, I try not to put a whole ton of it down um, at one time because if I do, then I do sometimes end up with that problem of things going, you know, who knows where, everywhere. So make sure you keep your, your substrate, whatever you're working on, Yupo, photo paper, craft plastics, you know, whatever you're working on, even canvas. Um, I can't help you with canvas. I have not done this on canvas yet. I just haven't tried it. I mean, I, I'm, I've seen some beautiful results, um, of people doing it on canvas board, and that they're saying that they have not even um, primed it any farther. But to me, I don't know, I like this smooth look of these papers instead of the canvas look. Although, I may try that one day too, just for the fun of it to see how it turns out. Um, let's see, I think that's about it um, that I wanted to make sure that I showed you with the, the hair dryer. Um, you know, most of the questions that have been about it were either what am I using, which I get, every single video and every single picture that I've posted a Facebook group, I think somebody asked me, 
what it is I'm using to move the air. For those of you with arthritis, I highly recommend something like this. Doesn't have to be this, but this shape. This is great. I mean, I've, I've got some mild arthritis in my hands. And using a regular hair dryer, which is what I did when I first started out, it was absolutely killing me. Having to try and, and grip that hair dryer like this for so long was just, it was really hurting. It was hurting my wrists and my hands and my fingers. And <clears throat> so this is great because I can just, for me, you can kind of see, I've got a finger hooked under there, which kind of helps support it. Um, but then I've got the button just, sorry, I think I'm getting out of frame again, but the button just right there by my thumb, just to where I can slide it up and down easily, and I don't have to grip it tightly. I, I mean, it's, I hold it very loosely. I don't squeeze it, and I can paint for a long time, um, without my hands starting to hurt, uh, with this shape right here. So, um... This is the shape that I'm recommending if you're going to use a hair dryer. This is, you know, like I said, not even necessarily this brand. It doesn't matter what brand you use. I I went looking when, when I realized I wanted this shape because I'd seen people using embossing tools. And I thought, well, you know, that I want that shape, but I wanted the cool setting. Um, so I went looking on Amazon for a hair dryer with bad reviews <laughs> that was, that, um, you know, had a cool setting that people were complaining that it didn't have a strong airflow and didn't dry their hair good. So, uh, that's, um, that's how I ended up with this one because it didn't have really great reviews on Amazon. I think it's about $20 for this particular one and you might actually find some that are somewhere that's cheaper than that. I mean, go to a thrift store. You know, go to a, a con, uh, not a convenience store. They probably don't have them. A consignment shop. <laughs> Anything like that. Um, you know, and you may be able to find something like this for a whole lot less than new. Um, all right. Metallic. So, I use almost, I, I have several different metallics. Though my favorite by far and I'm hoping this is in frame. I can't really tell at the moment. Um, and my granddaughter's got her headphones on. She's sitting over there watching YouTube while I'm making a YouTube video. Um, is this pinata brass. It's, it, it stays kind of chunky a lot of times and you can kind of get it to sort of float on top. So you keep that sort of um, goldish color that it has to it. This is not a, like a brilliant gold. Otherwise, it wouldn't be called brass. But <laughs> it's uh, it's nice and shiny, and I love metallics and glitter things, and I'm, uh, I'm still a kid at heart when it comes to that. So this is my favorite metallic to use, and that's what you'll see in my messy bottle here that I really need to clean uh, is, is pinata brass. So one of the ways that you can apply your metallic. I'm just gonna work over top of this, I think. Well, first, make sure it's shaken up. This, uh, I like this bottle because I can kind of see through it and I can tell when there's still some sort of stuck to the bottom. But when you first, if you order like a big bottle of it like that, it, it's got balls in it to sh help shake it up and blend it. And you'll have to shake it for a while before you even hear those balls start to rattle around in there. Uh, don't don't think that they're not in there because they actually are. I, I got a bottle one time. Uh, it wasn't the brass. It was something else. But I thought, well, maybe they didn't put the balls in this color because I shake it for five minutes before they finally started rattling. And then shake it for another minute or two after that to make sure it's mixed up good. Because all of the... Um, mm, yeah, my mind's gone blank. The You know, the stuff... The stuff that makes it metallic, like the mica powder or whatever it is that they, they use in here, um, it will sink to the bottom. It separates out fairly quickly. So make sure that's shaken up really well. Um, in fact, when if you all watch me paint, you'll see me almost every time before I use it. I'll shake it up good before I start, but then when I'm getting ready to use it, I'll pick it up and just give it a couple of shakes to make sure. 
So, all right. The best way I've found to do this, if you want your ink to kind of float on top, and this is thanks to other people as well giving me this advice when I was first starting out. This is not entirely me. I, I, had, I did have some help with this because I was really struggling with the metallics, and I still do. I still feel like bleh on a lot of them. All right, so just put down a drop or two of your ink, whatever you're gonna, whatever you're gonna do. Then just put a drop, a drop or two. I got two in there. Although there have been occasions when I've ended up with five or six by accident. All right, so then I usually come at the side of it with my alcohol because it kind of lifts that. I hope you guys can see that. It's kind of lifting that brass up. Sorry, I got a little too much alcohol in there. It's taken me forever to get this dry, so I can talk to you guys again. All right, let me, let me stand up here. I'm hoping I can get this to where you guys can see it. Um, hopefully you can see that brass kind of glistening a little bit there. There we go. Uh, and the light. It's and Now, some of it will mix in with your ink, and I don't know that you guys can see that from here, but some of it will mix in with your ink, and it makes just a shimmery color of whatever color ink you're using. And I've actually done that. I've mixed the ink and the metallic together before I put it down. If I wanted um, to have just a, a shimmery, metallic looking ink. The Tim Holtz does make some, um, some metallic, some pearls, I think they're called. I have them over there, but I haven't, I've only used them once. If you use those, first of all, no, this. not that baby doll. Oh. They're, they're these. If you want to look for them, um, no, I think they're in that other case. This in one? the very back of it, maybe. Oh no, never mind. They're in a case that's closed. I know where they are. Um, anyway, <laughs> there. If you want to use those, they do not wisp well. It's they're almost impossible for me to get this really soft look. Do not use alcohol with the pearls if you use them. Make sure that you use the blending solution. There's that those pearl colors, they do not like the um, just straight up alcohol. They don't like it. They will clump up and you'll look like you have curdled milk or something on your paper. So make sure that you use the alcohol blending solution. Um, this is the Tim Holtz Ranger brand of it. Now I don't use this in my paintings. Um, the, I don't love this, but that's mostly because I'm used to runny, watery alcohol. And this is kind of a thick stuff. And it's, I don't know, it leaves a little bit of residue outside of the the ink area, the way that I do it. So I, uh, I don't really use it much, but the biggest reason is this bottle right here cost me $6, I think. Um, the I have a 32 ounce bottle of isopropyl alcohol, which cost me $3. So, you know, two ounces for $6 or 32 ounces for $3, you know, <laughs> take your pick. This is, that's one, the biggest reason that I don't use this, because I use a lot of alcohol. And so, um, it, it would just be prohibitively expensive for me to use the blending solution all the time. Um, all right, now, 
when you once you put down your metallic it is going to start mixing in more and more the more you work it what some people do they they'll actually put it down with a straw and blow it to keep it near they'll put it down and then blow it with a straw not put it down with a straw sorry about that although i suppose you could do that too some people do use a pipette and um some people use uh, i don't have one handy right here but a palette like sort of like a palette knife and put it along the sharp edge of the palette knife and then just sort of lay it down where they want it to go i'll give a, a shout out to lisa jordan art for that one she's the first one that i saw doing that um, and she does some beautiful work guys you should check out what she does uh, she uses the pins quite a bit the alcohol ink pins uh, which is something I haven't used yet. So if y'all are interested in that or want to play around with that, check out Lisa Jordan Art. She does have a YouTube channel and you can see some of what she's doing on there. Um, all right, so it gets a little tricky because your alcohol will start, I mean your metallic <laughs> will start mixing back in and you'll end up with it just mostly shimmery everywhere. I'll do a little bit here just so you guys can kind of see. So you all probably can't see this, but I've got this just beautiful shimmery metallic red in here right now. It's still a little wet right now, but, um, but it did take away the gold. So if you want to keep much gold in it, you need to not work that area much at all. What a lot of people do is they'll put some down, come right up to the edge of it. You know, and try not to go over the edge of it much. So, but depending on how you want your painting to look, you know, th this is just something that you guys are going to have to play around with and experiment with, you know, seeing what you like and what works for you. Some things that I've seen other, when I was, especially when I was starting out and, um, sorry, <laughs> this, I'll end up with smears all over this because this is what I used to wipe my fingers. Um, and, People would, I would see videos, not that there's many out there, but the few that I got to watch, the things that they were doing that were just working amazing for them, I could not make work for me. I, I just couldn't. And I, my techniques sort of ended up being a combination of other people's things that I saw them doing. I just worked out my own kind of way of doing it. All right, um, real quickly, I, I did not mean for this to turn into a super long video, but uh, one other way of the metallics, this is a liner brush, just a you know super thin, not sure how good you can see this, because I can't tell if I'm in frame right there. You're gonna look, Maddie. Tell me if my brush is in frame. The brush is not, but the head is. How's that? No. Okay. <laughs> Can it be seen yet? Yes. Okay, so my director back here is telling me that you all can see the brush part now. Um, just no, very... No, you can't. Yeah. <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> okay. Um, anyway, it's just a very fine liner brush. Um, you can put your metallic on afterwards. Me. When I, I use these, the, the girls eat these fruit cups all the time and little applesauce cups and things and I save the cups and I use well sometimes I use the other side for dip or snacks or something but I use them in my painting because I use this part to put alcohol in sometimes I mean to put ink in good grief guys I'm not sure what's the matter with my brain tonight all right so you just want to get a little bit of it on your brush I don't put alcohol on it as well I only put the metallic on and you can kind of this is not going to be great, but you can kind of follow the little lines. Oh, struggling here. See, you can 
if you're a better painter than I am, you can kind of follow the lines. <laughs> so I'm having a terrible time, guys. I'm sorry. The light at the angle that I'm at right now, I'm having a really hard time seeing. And I'm getting, I'm hurrying too much. So I'm getting too much ink on my brush. But anyway, so you can make your own little veins and lines. And this is, yes, now I'm really truly just messing. Just to give you an idea. I'm trying to make them thicker than I normally would. Another thing you can do is if you get a decent amount on your brush, you know, you can just use it like that. And you can make little spots like that. Now, one thing you gotta be careful about with the little spots is if you start getting using up too much of your metallic, you may end up with a hole in the middle of your spot <laughs> because the, the alcohol ink underneath is gonna kind of push out and make it look kind of strange. So, and that's another thing you can actually do and that I have done. <sighs> There, there are times when I have dripped ink or I've dripped alcohol on the paper. Sorry, let me try and get my brush clean just a little bit so I can show you what I mean. And it leaves little white spots. All right, sometimes those are fine. Not a problem at all. And I don't have another one of those cups handy right here where I can reach, so I'm just going to do this. I put just a little bit of alcohol on there. And you just go back over, and that was way too much alcohol where I just poured it on my brush, but at least you guys can see it. And you see what it does? You just touch it to the paper. And obviously, the more you the more you use it without replenishing the alcohol on your brush, the smaller your circles will get. But you can see, you can do that. And you also, I was gonna show you this painting. You can do it with um, colored ink as well. Uh -huh. my, my director and, and camera woman ran away. I don't know where she went, so I'm going to have to try and stand up over here to see if you guys can see this. Um, so I had dripped ink on this, a different color of ink <laughs> than where I wanted it. So, you know, I just went with it and went back in and added um, just little spots of ink. I, I put some of this, the green color I was using, I put it up here and then put, you know, the salmon color down in there in the green and came up with that. Um, this painting, by the way, I'll be doing another video on this, but this painting is the one that I'm going to be doing a giveaway on soon. <laughs> I have Crossed the thousand subscribers. I never in a million years thought that I would get there. Um, when I started this channel, I was thinking, you know, wow, if I make it to 50, that's gonna be like the, the most amazing thing ever. Um, and now, I can't remember what I was at this evening. I actually checked it just a little while ago. Um, but I, it's over a thousand anyway, like a thousand and thirty maybe, twenty something, thirty. I don't know. Can but anyway, I'm really super happy. Um, I, I'm <laughs> say that would be Maddie saying hi to you guys. So I am gonna do a giveaway sometime in the next few weeks, um, as soon as I get that all figured out. And this is the painting. I'll give you all a preview that are watching this video. This is the painting that I'm gonna be doing. Um, for the giveaway. Maybe, so it's one of my favorites, giveaway? which is I'm going to be. How do you get the giveaway? Just a minute, I want to do it to you. I want the giveaway. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. My granddaughter has decided she wants this painting, so she's going to be winning the giveaway. <laughs> so, um, I'll have to show you the painting I did for her. She uh, she picked out the colors and everything that she wanted. Want she she it? challenged me with my color mixing and my color blending. <laughs> So, um, all right, sealing the paintings. I, I know there's so much more I could show you guys, I know, but I'm trying, oh, there she is with it. So, <laughs> yeah, she, uh, she definitely gave me a challenge. She is my unicorn lover. Yeah, and there's her hand, yeah. hi. She's my little unicorn lover, and she wanted, 
she looked at my inks and picked out these colors and she wanted this iridescent glitter in it too so that one was pretty tricky because uh, it's kind of hard to have purple and orange and things next to each other and blue and orange and stuff and not have it right careful with it babe and not have it come out a big hot mess just a bunch of brown looking stuff so um yeah, so that was her, her unicorn painting. One of her birthday presents from me. All right, so sealing your artwork. I am not going to be spraying this. I assume that you guys can figure out how to spray a cans of spray paint on your own. So if not, maybe you shouldn't be um, <laughs> doing anything if you can't figure out how to use a spray paint paint, spray paint can. So <laughs> hopefully you all can figure that out on your own. Um, first, make sure that your painting's dry. Don't spray it right after you paint it. Let it sit for a few days. Sometimes mine actually sit for weeks. weeks. I've got... Um, I, can, I don't know if I can show you. As I finish them, I put Wait, them on. No, no. I've got this just this big black. See the big black board here? I got it from Walmart. It's, eh, what's it called? Um, I don't know. It's some kind of like foam, foam poster board or something. I don't foam remember what it's called. Board. Um, foam board. But I can fit, you know, four paintings on it. I just use painter tape rolled up and stick them. You know, stick it to the board. Can I have this box? <coughs> oh, excuse me. <clears throat> um, and I'll just leave them until my board is full. And then at some point, you know, after that, after the most recent painting has been on there for a few days. Can you give away these? No, sweetie. Um, I'll take them outside and start sealing them. First step, make sure it's clean. Make sure there's no dust or anything like that on it. You don't want dust and fuzz and things on it because once you once your sealant dries, you're stuck with it in your painting, whatever's on it. And it's, I've had little bug carcasses get sealed into paintings and it has infuriated me to no end. Um, first step, I do not know how to say this, Kmar, Kmar, um, let's camo? See. There we go. This is it. Krylon, like Kmar varnish. Is it camo? Um, that's what I use for the first step. You want to put about three coats. Well, what I do. I put about three coats of this on. I gotta make sure my, I think my, my director keeps bumping the, uh, uh -huh, stuff. <laughs> so, um, all right, so you want to put about three coats of this on, light coats. If you gob it on there, you're going to have a problem. Uh, I mean, it's like any spray paint. It's just not going to work well if you put on your layers too thick. So, you know, just don't sh light even layers. Let it dry good 30, 45 minutes, however long it takes. Um, just depends on how hot it is how you know when you're doing it outside if the sun's shining on it it dries a lot faster um if it's not there's been times it's taken forever for it to dry for me um you know keep on doing that obviously by the time you get to that last coat it's going to take a little bit longer for it to dry so that's about three coats of that and then this is a krylon uv archival varnish um, I use the semi-gloss. They have this in matte, and I think they have it in satin and glossy as well. But the semi-gloss is what I prefer. I don't want my, I just don't want them super shiny, but also don't want them super matte either because it, if you have metallic in it, it just, if you seal it with a matte sealant, it will just absolutely kill your metallic. Then um, about four coats of this is what I put on on top. So, you know, and then just let it dry. You know, don't, if you're selling your paintings and you need to ship something to somebody, don't put these, don't put your paintings up for sale and like the day that you seal them. These need to have, I, I won't even stack mine together for, well, I, 
I separate them out. See, like this one's in, it's in a plastic bag to protect it anyway, but um, I, you don't even want to stack them together. I made that mistake one time. They had been sitting for a couple of days. I had, this was, we've traveled a lot with um, my husband's work and we were staying in a hotel room <laughs> and I was needing, I had paintings laying out all over everything <laughs> in the hotel room and I needed to get them up out of the way so the housekeeping could come and clean the room one day. But they had only been drying for um, maybe two days. So I'm not even thinking, I stacked them on each other and thought, well, you know, I'll go out, let them clean the room, come back, spread them back out, they'll be fine. Well, I forgot about them. And they sat there stacked together for a couple of more days. And when I went to take them apart, oh yeah, it was a mess. And I was just sick because there were maybe 10 paintings that were completely ruined. And so it it peeled the paint off in places. It I mean it was it was a mess. So make sure you let them dry. Let them cure before you put them in anything or put anything on them. Let them cure. I would say at least a week um, to be on the safe side. Unless I am just in a big big red, well. What I'll do, I'll leave mine on the boards as long as I can. I have several boards, you know, and I kind of uh, rotate through them. And I will try and leave them on the boards as long as I can. But then as I need a board, I'll take those paintings off, but I still won't stack them up. I still try and lay them out flat for at least a few more days. And then, uh, you know, after that, I'll... This is just a mat and backing board I got off of Amazon because I'm sure somebody's going to want to know. Uh, I can't remember the name of the group off of Amazon where I got it. I'm so sorry. I can't remember. But they sell these in packs of like 25 or 50. They have white and black and some multicolor packs. But you can get it as a set where you get the mat. This is just a single mat with the beveled edge there. It's not a double or anything. Just a single mat and then the backing board and then this nice little bag that fits it as well. You can get them as a set, which is really handy. So, um, so that's it with the sealants, you know. Uh, you know, three or four coats, at least three coats of this Kmar, Carmar, I, I don't know, I'm sorry. Um, I'm gonna call it Kmar, <laughs> Kmar varnish. Uh, three or four coats of that first, and then at least four coats, usually is what I do, of the UV archival varnish. And this is, you know, it's like a non-yellowing, um, this is supposed to be non-yellowing as well. I have not experienced this because I always do the Kmart first. I have heard people say it doesn't matter which one you do first, but I've also heard people say if you do the UV spray first, that it actually can reactivate your inks and you may end up with spots on your painting. So I have not even played around with that. I only do the Kmart first and just do a light coat, you know, light coats to seal it in there. So, um, all right, I think that is about it for tonight. Today, this morning, whatever time it is, wherever you are that you're watching this video. Um, so it's nighttime here. <laughs> so, and it's getting about time for me to get some little munchkins in bed. So I am going to um, wrap this up. I hope that this, you know, has kind of helped you guys a little bit to know, uh, made some things a little bit more clear that maybe I haven't covered well in the videos or that you just can't see. Sorry, I, please don't judge my artwork by what you see here. I, I promise I can do better, I promise. Um, so I will, um, with my next video that I post, I will be doing the, I will say what the, I don't know, start the giveaway, I guess, the rules of the giveaway or whatever. Um, and like I said, this will be 
the painting that I'm going to do. I, you all probably can't see it that way. I like it turned that way. Um, that's going to be the painting that's going to be the giveaway painting. So all of y'all that are smart enough to be watching this video, you all got a preview of what's going to be the giveaway painting. So if you're interested, um, make sure you if you click that little bell that's up by the subscribe button somewhere, um, that will should notify you then whenever I post a new video. And I don't post them so often that it would drive you crazy. Um, I'm not like some of the YouTubers that my granddaughters watch that have at minimum a video every day and sometimes two or three a day. Uh, so, you know, that, that will let you know whenever I post a new video. And that way, you know, you won't miss out on this giveaway. And at some point, I'll be doing another one. I'll decide what milestone if I'm getting more and more subscribers or just at some point just to say thank you to you guys because that's really what this is about the giveaway is to say thank you all I'm, I really appreciate it I wish I could send paintings to every one of you but I, I well there's so many of you now I can't I couldn't paint that many so um I, I really appreciate it. So at least one of you is going to be lucky enough to get this, which is one of my favorites. And I, I hope that you all like it as well. It's the reason that I chose it is I wanted to do something, wanted to give one of you all something that I was really happy with. So um, with that next video after this one that you're watching right now, I will be saying in that video how to enter the giveaway. Um... And I, you know, I will ship it overseas. I'll pay for the shipping. So it's fine. Those of you, I, I, I can't stand to not do the overseas. I'm just so tickled to see. I've had, um, I know I've had Germany, Denmark, Australia. Um, I know I'm forgetting somebody and I'm so sorry. Um, France. I don't know, several different countries now, which is just super exciting to me. I wish I could come visit all your countries. Um, those of you in Australia, yay! I've always wanted to visit Australia, uh, and I've never gotten to. Uh, I, I think that started because I've always been an opal lover. And so, I just, I don't know, there's something about Australia, but Australia just looks like a beautiful place. Uh, it just looks gorgeous, the things that I've, the pictures that I have seen of it, it looks great. Um, although all of all of these other countries that you guys are from um, all look just amazing we we do spend some time looking at pictures of other places online as part of our our school um, studying culture and history of other places as well and uh, you know our world is an amazing place guys it really is it's truly amazing truly beautiful so thank you guys and gals, and mostly gals, actually. I'm going to have to start saying gals. Um, and hope I don't offend any of the men, because if I look at my analytics on YouTube, right now it's saying that 100% of my viewers are women. So, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I think that some people are probably um, declining to list their um, what their sex is on YouTube, so it does, but the ones who are listing, apparently it's 100% women right now, so, so I really need to stop with the guys thing, I'm sorry, it's a, it's a bad habit, uh, from growing up in the South, I guess, I say ain't sometimes, and y'all, and guys, and, um, one thing you won't hear me say, though, is over yonder, I hate that phrase, <laughs> sorry all my southern friends but I hate that phrase it's, it's over it. yonder <laughs> so, alright well it. I hope all of you have a wonderful day and thanks for watching again thanks for subscribing if you haven't subscribed already please do and be sure you hit that little notification bell to make sure that you know when I get a new video up uh, and especially to make sure that you don't miss the giveaway that's coming up very soon. All right, I will see you all soon. Bye.